I think what's really interesting about the work that we do at Adobe is that it um, spans such a broad spectrum of things where we have mobile, we're breaking into TV, we have the online properties, we have the older desktop applications with Photoshop and the dynamic media applications. When Adobe first started talking about doing things online versus just on the desktop, there was like the buzzword of we're going to create a service Yeah. where they were grouping everything that was going to be in a browser as... Software as a service. Yeah, software as yeah. a service. Something that's relatively new to Adobe is to come out with uh, web-based products versus desktop products. So there's a lot of uh, interesting new things that we're trying to experiment with, new um, approaches to design that are associated with uh, what it means to actually get out a web-based product. One of the things that you know I've been thinking about recently is <clears throat> what is the best way for our services to integrate into the desktop products. It's kind of an interesting hot topic on the team. You call them uh, a service, right? Or a web property. So those are the same. To me, it boils down to semantics at some point. I like to think of things as, when he says web property, I think of more of a product, something that we can actually productize, whereas a service might be something that is uh, common across different products. So Create PDF might be a service, not necessarily a product. I think it's now starting to break into these, you know, what would be an actual service, something that could be shared across or in service of other web applications, and what is an actual web application. Right. And how that translates into the desktop, because I think that's where that the ambiguity the... has been with um, that transition phase, because we're also leading our customers, some of our customer base, into the services realm rather than being in their own native context. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's one of the things that's really interesting is yeah. thinking about what should that experience be and, and how do we actually expect people to use these products or services and what's the task that they're trying to accomplish at that time. So what are some of the challenges? We're a centralized design team but we really are partnering with the business units and so there's always sort of the give and take of what is the best experience versus what are the business goals versus you know what are we actually going to be able to build and get out into the marketplace. Well, the biggest one of the biggest challenges is that we're centralized design, but we're not centralized engineering at Adobe. Right. Mm -hmm. right? So we have a common process, um, but engineering doesn't, and so each team works in a different way. And well, and I would add to that, trying to help those teams understand what our process is as well and how we're trying to uh, fit our process into, into what they're trying to do on the engineering side rather than just building a collection of features that we feel is, is, a mark, is going to be marketable, but also creating something that's going to be a good user experience. But it's really amazing when uh, the, the actual product teams get how valuable design strategy can actually be to their process and they start understanding that, well, if you actually don't have a strong foundation in you know, what your users' wants and needs are and their desires, your foundation isn't, it just doesn't exist. And so helping sort of coach them along the line to help them realize that yeah, this really does matter um, is, it's, I mean, it's incredibly rewarding. Yeah, I think from our standpoint, it, we really have to approach our product where we have one, one foot in the future and one foot in the past. Because I think across all our products, we have so many fantastic opportunities to look ahead to things like multi-touch and multi-device and, and, and services. So we have such large vertical workflows that are in place that will be in place at infinitum. And figuring out how we can drive kind of experiential stuff forward, when at the same time, a lot of my users are still on 15 and 17 inch CRTs, right? right. right. They don't have laptops. How do you balance kind of this progressive design idea, trying to drive design strategy, while at the same time understanding that there are really these constraints mm -hmm. that we have to work around to be able to support what's still already in place. Yeah. How do you find design opportunities within Acrobat? I mean, it's the same sort of, it's the same sort of, I think, question that we have within the Creative Suite. Right. <laughs> they sell a lot of copies. I mean, it's yeah. how Adobe makes money. And, they, you know, it's, that, that sort of ship is sailing fairly straightforward. And how do you introduce innovation and design into that ship without rocking the boat completely? Acrobat as a product is both deep and broad, right? It's, it's got so many different features, 
that covers so many different ideas, but then at the same time, in any one of those silos, you can dive a mile deep and do so many different things. So for us, I think, especially right now, it's, it's a very much a subtractive process. I think that's where we feel like we can add value. So we can look across this, this huge feature list and say, where are the real features that, that drive the most value for our users? And then just trying to, to quite honestly, bring the interface into the 21st century. When you look at Acrobat, it's, in some cases, it looks very singular. Um, you don't see a lot of consistency across the other Adobe products with Acrobat. We want to change that. And at the same time, be able to kind of easily usher our users into that new paradigm. Um, it's a challenge, but it's, a, it's an interesting one. Some of the, the ways that I've been looking at it recently are in terms of risk management. So if you sort of break it down and uh, realize that you know, every time you build a new piece of software, there's a risk of actually getting it wrong. And you can try to you know, market it as well as you can in order to you know, sell it, but it's actually not right, and it's, you know, that's, a, that's actually a huge risk. So the upfront design strategy is really about reducing the amount of risk associated. But then on top of that is all the great design work and the innovative, fun design work that we do within the organization. We've been talking a lot about our challenges, but I wanted to talk a little bit about what motivates us at Adobe. Like, I let my team beat me in Halo every day. Yeah. <laughs> keeps them inspired. What is it that you know brings you guys to work every morning? The people. The people? Yeah. I think the people I've all met are all fantastically talented. Like beyond standard, definitely exceptional. There's an environment at Adobe that uh, fosters creativity, um, but it's not, you're not, people aren't at each other. There's mm -hmm. not that one up type of atmosphere mm -hmm. where I hear it really it can be a collaborative environment. And I love the fact that, you know, if you share a design with somebody, you can reach out to the different team and get feedback and it's, it is more of a collaborative atmosphere. You know, it's about creativity and self-expression and, and the, you know, the designers who are attracted to Adobe are oftentimes, you know, practitioners of you know, you know printmaking or they're illustrators or they're you know they're they're pros at photoshop and they create a you know they're pro photographers or, or aficionado so you just have this you know nice collective creative mix of you know people who are you know truly designers doing design for products which are then for designers to you know do better design people use the things we do to build other things. They build businesses, they build banks and hospitals and design firms and photography studios. And, and so personally, I feel like if I come into work every day and I make good design decisions, I can help all these other people do all these other fantastic things. So the opportunities of scale that we have when we help our teams make good design decisions, I think is, is very satisfying. And I still love to go out on these customer visits and talk to actual customers and find out how they're using our products and what would they like to be able to do and what have we enabled them to do now that they couldn't do two years ago or five years ago. There are a few of us that have been designers before we became managers yep. and I, I've been uh, in design for a long time and using all of Adobe's products all along before Started I came to it. Yeah, so for me it's like uh, I'm actually at Adobe working on the products. This is amazing. The people are passionate about what they do, and also our customers are extremely passionate. So mm -hmm. I think all of that energy going into what we do is makes it a great place to work. Yeah. Are we done? I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to work.